doing this thing like Babble. We'll be doing a spoiler review for what was it? We're doing a spoiler review for that, Jake. Wonder Woman. And with the erection of this, the spoiler switchblade, we're gonna begin. So, so spoiler warning. Um, spoilers. I just, yes, I just want to make sure they knew that this was a spoiler yes, review. Jake, it's a spoiler review. Yes, it is. They got the concept. I, I erected the spoiler switchblade. That means there's spoilers. Well, maybe they didn't have enough time to click away. Okay, you probably clicked away now. Spoiler time. Spoiler time. Okay, so as we had said before, this, the the, the whole point here of of Wonder Woman, why, what she wants to do is she wants to kill Ares because she believes that that will end the war. The war to will, end all wars. The, that will end the war to end all wars, and therefore all other wars subsequently. Wait 20 years or a year. Thanks, <laughs> Russia. Thanks. Invading Poland in 1920. That was, it was one year after the Great War. And of all places, Poland. I mean, nobody wants that godless land. Hey, man. That's where my family's from. But anywho, uh, she wants to kill Ares, and one of the big th plot points here is, who is Ares? Well, for the first half of the movie, the movie's just like, oh, it's pro it's, 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 it's General Lu it's it's Ludendorff. It's General Ludendorff. See, he Obviously. even has magical powers that, because uh, Doctor Poison has given him gas. Yes, and he's like, oh, I'm the I'm the Hulk now, um, I'm which a... actually might be a prelude to the Bane Poison. Oh, that could be. That's that's a good point. That that could be a a, a Bane, a, like proto Bane stuff, which is interesting. But um. After she kills General Ludendorff, which he does not die in the real war, but DC plays fast and loose with not only DC lore, but history. So, I don't know. It could take a few few, few bits, so who cares? Yeah, she stabs her sword through him while he's laying down, and the sword goes through him and into the roof of a building. And there was no blood, there so... Was no, I was expecting there to be blood. But I was expecting, a, like, blood to trickle down saw-style from her from her blade, which... But so no. apparently when you get stabbed with an ancient Greek weapon, there's no blood. Yeah. It cauterizes you. It's like a lightsaber. 300 lied to us. Yeah, 300 did lie to us. Uh, so, yeah, uh, it's... So, but you know who it was the whole time? You Sir Patrick. It? it was Sir Patrick. It was J Lupin, the weak, di the weak diplomat who put who who, who put was, this whole operation together. He was whispering in people's ears. He, and would, he was, yeah, he was whispering in people's ears. He's like, this is how you kill people. I am actually Ares. So there you go. That's the big spoiler, that it's actually the weak diplomat, which proves that a weak diplomat is sometimes just as good a warmonger as a power-hungry general. Thanks, now, World that, War II. Yeah, yeah, well, not so you see, that is, uh, yeah, thanks, Chamberlain. You Chamberlain. Asshole. Chamberlain. Chamberlain. Yeah. Chamberlain. <laughs> well, but, I mean, that's that's something that's not really often in movies. It's usually the diplomat who's the good guy, and the, 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 the general is the bad guy. But he, as you can see, both can be just as destructive as the other. It just and, goes to show that war really was the villain, or the god of war. Yeah, that. and, and that, so uh, it is. See, the war is the villain. See how well they did that in... That's why it's a good thing they chose World War One for this one, you guys. See what they're, they're, they're see, see what they're getting at. See what they're getting at. Are you guys seeing it? Seeing it? Oh, I see. Okay. So, yeah, it was... Uh, I would have liked Ares to have a little bit more development. I mean, he kind of does have this long spiel where he's just like, I'm not the god of war, I'm the god of truth, and I've shown the truth to the humans. And he has the lasso of truth ar around him, and he's just like, no, I'm a... It's, it's, humans are just naturally this way. I'm just bringing out... Their inner their, demons. Their inner demons, their true nature. That's really the whole... That's that's what it's all about. And, and, then, I sh and then Wonder Woman's like... Shit, now what do I do? Yeah, which I, I think was interesting. I definitely would have liked to have seen him done more behind mm -hmm. closed doors type things, like making secret deals. Because he's the one that's basically maybe arguing that for flat, Armistice. Maybe, yeah, because he's the one arguing for Armistice the whole movie, which is why there's that fake out. I mean, it had to be at least one of him, by, by either General Ludendorff or him, because they were the two big name actors. So it had to be one of them. <laughs> yeah. And, and, like I said, they, they spoiled who he was playing in promotional material. I spoiled it to Chris in the theater. And, and he I, spoiled it right to my ear. But I technically spoiled it in our Wonder Woman trailer review, so it was a re-spoiler. I will get you. I know you will. Back. You don't follow movies as closely as I do. No, because I don't like to be spoiled, Jake. I just don't. But that, he actually put that out on it. Never mind. So, uh, Chris Pine... He kills himself. Yep. So I just I'm gonna paint you guys a picture and tell me if this reminds you of anything. So a man named Steve 
realizes that a weapon of mass destruction is on an airplane, so he takes it on himself to sacrifice himself by getting rid of the plane in an act of valor that will end the war. Where, where, have, we, uh, where have we seen that before, Chris? Superman. Yep. Superman's secret identity is not Clark Kent, it's actually Steve Rogers. Captain America, yeah, that was, the ending is kind of a ripoff of Captain America, I will grant you. Wonder Woman and Captain America came out at the same time, though, so... They, they did. They were both used as kind of American propaganda against the Germans in World War II, which I'll, I'll give you that, but it was very... I don't want to say it was a direct rip-off, but it was... But, uh, yeah, yeah, it was pretty pretty close for our for our tastes. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, weren't there other ways that he could have gone about it, like landing the plane somewhere else? Maybe They, 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 they did say that the, or the gas was on the timer... So it would have gone off wherever he landed, but he, he could have, I don't know, crashed it into the ocean, or I don't know. I, um, yeah, but that would have really been like Captain America. <laughs> well, that would have, yeah, that would have been a bit too Captain America. So he just decided to sacrifice himself. He flew it up in the atmosphere, and then he blew up the... And that gave Wonder Woman the final hope to actually defeat Ares, because they actually did a little bit of a nod to Wonder Woman's original weakness, because if you guys do not know, the Wonder Woman comic was written by a weird dude. We polyamorous. Polyamorous. Well, that's not I'm not saying that's the weird part, but well, he he had a he had a fetish which was to have powerful women who are tied up. So Wonder Woman's original weakness, her kryptonite, so to speak, was to be in bondage, was to be tied up. Because when you tie her up, she loses all her powers. And there's a segment at the end of the battle where she's tied up, and and she just can't do anything. She can't do anything. And then Chris Pine, she sees him blow up. And, the, and, and you know, you can see there's a lot of emotion on her face. Gal Gadot did a really good job selling acting that, that moment. Sell, selling that moment, and she burst out of it. It's like, I don't got these weaknesses anymore, bitch. This is the 21st century. Mm -hmm. And then she, you know, kills Ares with uh, Zeus's lightning bolt. Yeah, Ares, um, I, I guess, is able to have Zeus's powers well, now. I guess they're both the child of Zeus, so whatever. Whatever. But, and yeah, speaking of that final fight, it was very CG-heavy. Very CG-heavy and very slow motion every so when slow motion and jump cut slow motion jump cut cg actually in the very beginning uh, uh there were there were a bit too many jump cuts uh before the before the whole chris pine thing while the, while she's training while she's training there's a lot of jump cuts in the fighting and i it was making me actually sick but i'm glad to actually it uh it's in the middle of the movie the jump, jump cuts started to go away and then they came back at the end so like, whatever why you do this why you do this to me? <laughs> but yeah, a lot of CG, a lot of slow motion, a lot of jump cuts in the final fight. I mean, they showed Ares' power set pretty cool. The fi Like, forging Maybe. thousands of weapons from fire and just throwing weapons at her. Uh, and then I guess he uses Zeus's lightning bolt and then he dies from it. So whatever. Uh, what else is it we talking about here? We have the slow motion. Um, but that's... I mean... Much the spoilers. Uh, another spoiler, uh, Wonder Woman is the... God killer. She's the god killer because she has this blade the whole movie that she's cherishing because she thinks it's the god killer. And then uh, one pretty cool scene is she tries to stab Ares and he, he just, just puts his hand, hand out and, and it just blade just like disintegrates on his hand. <laughs> on his hand, and he's just like, "That's not it, dude. You are. You are the god killer." I mean, one well, probably shouldn't have told her that. Yeah. <laughs> probably should have kept that part under wraps. But uh, they needed the plot to move forward, and he needed to. I guess it was part of his plan to convince her. I would have liked. I would have liked to see more because they showed a bit of a flashback of him whispering in the people's ears. I would have liked to see more of how he kind of got to power. Maybe him influencing wars throughout history and just kind of just going from one place to another, gaining power. Kind of a little bit more of that. Maybe yeah, not too much, but a little. Not bit. too much, but I mean, you, you got to think you have this immortal. Well, not immortal, but God, who's you know just. I mean, he had to have just shown up out of nowhere because he he looks like a fifty year old man. Yeah, I mean. Because, but I don't know. It's it's interesting. Uh, it, it would have been more interesting, actually, rather to to have more of how Ares was how was influencing the war and how he's doing it now. And, and but they do give you his thinking, like you know, no humans. We're just gonna the world's gonna be peaceful. It's gonna be nice and green. Yeah. And peaceful. And come on, man. I'm the god of truth, not war. Don't kill me, boo. And then she kills her. Yeah. She kills him. She kills him real quick. Um, one thing we didn't mention in our non-spoiler review. Um, probably should have. But we probably should have, but it's okay. No end credit scene. Exactly. No end credit scene. So once the movie's over, you can make proper egress. We Just... we, we stayed, hoping there would be a credit scene, and yeah, no. there wasn't. We, we, well, we wasn't. So what's, what's 
put an end credit scene here right now. What do you think this means for the Justice League? Because the Justice League commercial we saw beforehand, it seemed to have a lot of comedy. There was a little bit of comedy coming from Aquaman making fun of Batman for dressing as a bat. I'm surprised more people don't do that. But, <laughs> <laughs> well, um, the, the first Justice League trailer, Batman kind of starts it. He's like, hey, Arthur, I hear you can talk to fish. So oh, yeah, now it's, I, I feel like there's going to be kind of some witty banner between the two. Mm -hmm. But it, there's also uh, uh, the, the Flash. Flash. The Flash seems to have a lot of comedy going on. Which is why he's my favorite DC hero. He's hilarious. Uh, Cyborg is now Iron Man. Yep. He's DC Iron Man now. Uh, but it seems like they're, they, they, DC has learned their lesson. And it's not just comedy that makes a good movie. It's people acting like people, people, being characters with strengths and weaknesses. And I feel like the characters were far too one-dimensional before. So it's not it's not just comedy that I'm looking for. It's it, because well, people are kind of naturally funny. So I just want like sort of a more natural character to look at that I can sort of root for. Root for. But uh, and it looks like that they've learned their lesson. There are some parademons in the in the Justice League trailer, so there might be. So, yeah, so yeah. basically, I mean, they've, they've confirmed that the main villain of Justice League is going to be Steppenwolf, who's kind of mm -hmm. one of Darkseid's uh, henchmen type Yeah, I was people. worried they are going to go with Darkseid that early, because I saw the Darkseid's parademons, and all, all, that, all that good stuff. Um, but yeah, it looks like it could be interesting. I'd, I'm, I'm holding out hope that they, they pull it off, and they're, they're mm -hmm. finally getting their footing. If, if nothing mm -hmm. else... I know we we both gave this one a six out of ten, but mm -hmm. it, most of our problems came with the third act of this movie. So if, if it was, if the third act, well, that would have been the kid was talking the most in the theater. Yeah, that's also true. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like with if they would have fixed the third act, it probably would have been an eight or nine out of ten with me. I agree. I agree. But it's a good. It's a step in the right direction for DC. As I said, if you like, if you just like superheroes, you like DC, you like Wonder Woman, you're, you'll, you'll like, like this. It. You'll like this. Like I'll, I, I'll definitely watch this one again. Maybe not in the theaters, but I'll like streaming or buy yeah. it on DVD. It's similar to how I felt about Pirates Five. Yeah, similar, similar to Pirates Five. So yeah, go, 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 check it out if you want to. It's, it's good. Have fun. It's a fun movie. Have fun. Have fun. All right. Well, stay tuned. Later this week, we will be reviewing the movie coming out later this week. Tom Cruise's The, <coughs> Excuse the me. Mummy? <laughs> Unless you want to do Captain Underpants first. I don't know. But it's funny when Tom Cruise yells like that in the trailer. <laughs> I hope they didn't cut that from the actual movie. They seem to cut it from the trailer a little bit, because I think they realized how dumb it was. But anyway, we'll see you later. See you, bye. Bye-bye.